All right, so in this video, uh, we're going to take those uh, concepts that were introduced in the previous video, the idea of the total product, the average product, and the marginal product, and then look at them graphically, and then use those concepts to kind of start looking at this idea of how do we start narrowing down our choices of inputs um, to, to get towards this idea of profit maximization. So before we get started, I want to say that all we're looking at right now is this, uh, this physical relationship between inputs and outputs. Prices and money and costs have not been introduced yet. So all we're doing is working with this physical relationship, how do we characterize production, and ultimately kind of narrow down our choices. So uh, first thing I'll do is just kind of reiterate this idea of the total product. Here we have a graph, the total product curve, Vertical axis is the uh, level of output measured in Y. On the horizontal axis is the level of input measured in X. And again, all that total product curve tells us is what's the relationship between inputs and outputs? What's that input-output relationship? Give me a level of input, and I can tell you the corresponding level of output that will be produced. Okay, and as said before, all that total product curve tells us is what our options should be. It, does, it says nothing about what we should do. So the next concept that was introduced in that previous video was the idea of the average product. So the average product is defined as simply the total product, that level of output, divided by the level of input. So for this graph, it's simply y, the level of output, divided by x, the level of input. So what does it look like on the graph? Well, we could just choose some particular point that point on the total product curve has an output and an input. So for this level of input, on this particular point on the graph, what's the average product? Well, all we would have to do is, because this is the origin, 0 and 0, if we drew a, a line from the origin to that point on the graph, well, the slope of that line would be the change in y, which is y minus 0, over the change in x, which is x minus 0, and it would simply be y over x, which is our marginal product, I mean our average product, right there. So we could choose another point on that total product curve, draw a line from the origin to that point, calculate the slope of that line, and for this point, the slope of that line would be that new average product. So you might notice that as you start going up that curve, the line connecting the origin to that point on the total product curve gets bigger. So we have this idea of average product, at least for a little bit, for a period of time, gets bigger and then gets smaller. So why don't we just, so let's say we have We'll just call that the average product curve. It's not super accurate, but still kind of represents it goes up and then it goes down. Uh, so the next concept is, oh, and one last point is average product will never be negative because average product is always positive output, positive input. So if you're dividing a positive by a positive, it will always be positive. Okay, next idea is the marginal product. And we define that as being the change in total product divided by the change in input, or in this case, change in y divided by the change in x. Okay? So technically speaking, we would have to choose two points on the total product curve, calculate the change in y divided by the change in x, and then that calculate and divide the two. So change in y over change in x, and that would give us our marginal product. Now, as you move further along in economics and as you take calculus, technically speaking, we wouldn't use two points, we would just use one point. So in terms of the calculus, these two points would get closer and closer and closer. That measure of the marginal product would get more and more accurate until theoretically what we would have is two points infinitely close together, which means it's just one point, and you'd just be talking about the slope of the tangent. 
So we're going to just stick with that idea for this graph. So the marginal product is simply the slope of the tangent. So I go from point to point and I look at what the slope of the tangent would be and we see that it gets bigger, it gets smaller, and then it actually gets negative. So if I were going to um, draw a picture of the marginal uh, product curve, what we would see is, well I guess we'll kind of point out some of the key points. When you're at that maximum point, when you're at that top of the total product, the slope of the tangent is zero. It's a horizontal line, right? So if the slope is zero, then that means the marginal product is zero. Anything to the right of that curve, the slope is negative. So what we would see is, let's see. Okay. So we could say, here's the marginal product curve. It's going up, it starts falling, but at some point, we're going to see that it actually intersects the average product curve. So where would that be happening? Well, technically, since we've characterized the average product as the slope of the line connecting the origin to some point on the total product curve, if we looked at this point, and I conveniently kind of mapped it out here, so we're looking at this point. There's a line connecting the origin to this point, so the slope of that line would be the average product. You also notice that that line is tangent to the curve, so the slope of that line is also a marginal product value. So what we could do is just crudely drawing. So this is the one point where the marginal product is intersecting in the average product or the value of the marginal product is equal to the average product. So, and then we also have this idea where, where production is at its maximum, the, t, the total product curve is as high as possible, that's also where marginal product is equal to zero. So let's kind of map this out. Marginal product is equal to zero. Marginal product is equal to average product. And we can say a little bit more about these characteristics of this uh, input-output relationship, this production relationship. So first of all, between zero and this, we'll just say xi, xi slash ii, or one and two, what we have is marginal product is greater than average product. So if we do these vertical slices, we see marginal product is always bigger. Sometimes marginal product is falling, but it's still larger than average product. Uh, in this range, we notice that marginal product is less than zero. So if we just continue this thing along, so that means your marginal product is negative. And if we think, thought about the interpretation, uh, that saying, as you add another unit of input, the change in output is negative. So you add more input, output falls, and that's what we're seeing along here. So we'll just say uh, this is x2 slash 3. And so that leaves this range here where average product is greater than marginal product, but uh, marginal product is greater than zero. So average product is greater than marginal product, and marginal product is, is zero. So how can we characterize these ranges? Well, first of all, let's just call them stage one, stage two, and stage three. So using these characteristics of production, mainly the average product and the marginal product uh, at the various points, can we throw out ranges uh, of input use, levels of uh, the input x, that makes no sense. So let's start with the easy one. From this range, from where marginal product equals a zero uh, all the way to the right, that's basically saying this idea of adding more input is actually hurting production. So why would we ever want to do that? We never want to operate in this range where marginal product is uh, negative or where total product is falling. 
So we can throw out stage three. Let's look at stage one. Is there a problem with stage one? Well, if you really look at it, there isn't. We're seeing that as you use more of the input, the average productivity is increasing. That means as you add more input, uh, on average, each unit of input is producing more than it did before. Uh, marginal product is greater than average product. In fact, that's what's pulling up the average product. So if we go back, if you recall from the previous uh, video, we kind of characterize this average product, marginal product idea with your quiz average and what the impact of the next quiz is. So if we look at average product as being our quiz average, well, if our next quiz is always greater than the, the quiz average, it's going to pull up that average. And that's what we're seeing here. So, why don't we want to stay in stage one? Well, the idea of stopping in stage one is like stopping taking quizzes when you know it's going to increase your quiz average. So, anytime you're going to, your next quiz is going to uh, raise your quiz average, why stop? So that kind of characterizes the, the rationale of why we would never want to stop in stage one. Stage one is good, but we can always do better by adding more. That leaves us with stage two. Stage two, average product is falling. Marginal product is lower than average product. In fact, that's what's pulling down the average product. But, so it's really hard to say, is this a good thing or a bad thing? Well, the basic result is using no prices we're going to say, we're going to assert here, and we'll see further on in the course why this will be, that we're going to end up somewhere in stage two. When we maximize our profit, our input use is going to be somewhere in stage two. It's never going to be in stage one, and definitely not going to be in stage three. Okay? So, again, what we've done is we've looked at total product, average product, marginal product, kind of gotten this idea of what the pictures look like, or what the graphs look like, and we've used those concepts to start narrowing down the relevant uh, ranges of input use.